Good afternoon, everyone. It looks like most of our attendees have joined the broadcast. Um, so any other stragglers will just have to catch up. Thank you very much for joining us again this week for our weekly health check on retail leasing. Uh, we'd like to once more introduce Kyle Swain and he will have a lot to cover today. So I'll let you get started, Kyle. Thank you, Beck. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to week two and thank you for joining us again. Uh, another busy week this week and more, more announcements that affect you all. Um, hope everyone is staying safe, doing the right things and uh, looking after your businesses as best as possible. Uh, this week, <clears throat> Beck, if we just go to that first uh, overview page, uh, we'll have a look today at the mandatory, mandatory code, which was announced yesterday by Scott Morrison, uh, the key elements of that and how it impacts on you and just quickly touch on the process for uh, implementing that uh, your request for rent relief uh, utilising that um, the mandatory code. Um, so a mandatory code, we've progressed from last week, where last week was really just a set of guiding principles that have been agreed by the peak bodies, has now been formalised into a code of practice. Um, a mandatory code of practice is a set of rules or minimum standards that are uh, that are um, prescribed as regulations under the um, Competition and Consumer Act 2010. So it is a formal code of conduct that uh, tenants and landlords are now expected to abide by. And uh, there's a definition of who fits uh, under that regulation. And it's um, all tenants who have a turnover of less than $50 million. Essentially, if you've qualified for the job, um, uh, the, uh, the the package for, with the job keeper, um, you've met those requirements, then you qualify and you, you should uh, be adhering to this mandatory code. Um, the mandatory code will now go to each state and be legislated as a complement to the existing legislation during the COVID-19 period. So, there may still be slight changes or improvements to this mandatory code by the time it comes out as uh, legislation in your state or territory. Uh, so that's some work that uh, LPC Cressa is still working with NRA on uh, and the NRA will be presenting to the relevant states um, and uh, trying to improve this further and benefit tenants even more and put some more meat around these uh, points that uh, Mr. Morrison uh, announced yesterday. Um, so the key elements are now under this code of practice that if you turn over less than $50 million in your retail business and you're eligible under this code, that um, it's agreed between landlords and tenants that when you show how much you've been impacted by COVID-19, your business um, impact, then the landlord will provide in equal portion rent relief. Um, and the rent relief and the key element of this is that at least 50% of the relief uh, provided to you has to be waived. That means you do not pay it back. And uh, no more than 50% can be deferred, which means that at some point during the lease uh, and possibly beyond, the uh, landlord will recover that amount. So that's a, that's a really uh, good point. We want as much of it as possible waived and that's up to individual negotiation. You, you can negotiate for 100% of the relief to be waived if your landlord will come to the party and that's definitely preferable. Um, with the deferred amount, it, it can't be uh, sought to be repaid to the landlord until after COVID-19 um, when the government says that's now over, and actually a reasonable period of uh, uh, after that where you're um, uh, returning back to normal business as well. So it shouldn't uh, be repaid, starting to be repaid on the first day back uh, if your store is currently closed and you reopen it. Um, they're, the, they're the key elements, 50% at least has to, has to be waived. You'll never have to pay that back. Um, the goal, obviously, Mr. Morrison was pretty clear on this, um, as clear as he gets. 
the desire is to keep shops open, uh, to allow shops to reopen after COVID-19 and for those businesses to remain viable and to continue to trade through their whole lease term. Um, they recognise how important the retail sector is for our economy uh, and that's why all these measures are in place. So you're critical to the economy and to the society. Um, that has to be remembered when you're negotiating with your landlord, how important your business is to our economy overall and that we agree some uh, terms and conditions now of the rent relief and the repayment of that that, that guarantees that you remain viable um, after reopening. Um, as I covered off last week, you still have to provide accurate financial data. Um, that should involve some sales data that compares directly to the same period last year or the same period last month that can clearly show uh, the impact on your business, that you've dropped revenue by 30% or 50% or whatever. Um, but you want, uh, that's the percentage of rent that we'll be seeking um, for our clients to get back from the landlord or to, to have as relief. Um, when, uh, when we're acting on our client's behalf, um, what we're already doing, and this code has just uh, solidified that, is that we're, um, we're looking to achieve the best option possible for our client, obviously. And some things that we're looking at is the deferred amount and the amortization of that, meaning the, the period that you pay that back. If there's three years left on a lease, then it suits some of our clients to, to have us negotiate that amount to be amortised and paid back over 12 months at the end of the lease, so back end heavy, when we expect the economy to have bounced back a little better and, and for uh, the business to be in a better position to repay their full rent plus some extra. Um, that's one consideration. Um, this reasonable subsequent recovery period after the COVID-19 period, if um, uh, it, there's a period where we expect pretty much to be opening in uh, recession type conditions. Um, many shops may not reopen. There'll be a lot of vacancy. People may not be uh, shopping the way that they did before this happened. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of suggested changes that will occur as a result of this period. And the, the new normal will not be like it was before COVID-19. So we, many, many retailers and our clients are, are forecasting for sales um, significantly lower than pre-COVID-19. So there's a period after this COVID-19 period when the government says that's over, that it will take um, a period to recover back to somewhere near that pre-COVID-19 period. There should be some negotiation around your rent and what happens to it during that time. Um, we're advising our clients and we're, we're going to landlords with discussions around turnover rent during that period, which is fair for both parties. And uh, the landlord has the potential to share in the upside, but also um, it removes the risk from the tenant to uh, if, if, if sales are depressed during that period for a prolonged period of time. Um, there's some important things to remember. Um, there's plenty to still work out on this as it goes to states for legislation. Uh, these, these agreements will have to be documented and probably put into a, a uh, amendment to the lease. Um, that's obviously a legal document. We need to work out who's responsible for those legal costs. Uh, we need to work out things like how is it documented? If your lease does expire in six months time, and you may have heard uh, this on Scott Morrison's uh, announcement, then the amount of deferred rent may be paid back after the lease term. But how do we document that? And, and how do we hold you accountable for that after the period? Um, very important to note, you should negotiate something that you feel pretty confident that uh, you can um, uh, uphold, you can, you can meet those requirements because if you default on, on your lease uh, after this, um, your protections under this code may be, may be uh, cancelled. Um, what exactly that 
means and whether, whether you may be liable to repay the waived amount, we're still actually trying to determine. So um, we're certainly negotiating uh, for our clients on the side of extreme caution to cover any eventuation. Um, and that's how, how we're going about it. Um, that's a very, very quick overview of, of the code as it's come out just yesterday afternoon. Um, I wanted to do that quite quickly because everybody has seen, probably seen that announcement and, and read some reports of that. I wanted to get to some questions, if we could do that, Beck. Certainly. So we have a question from John. What are our rights to get rental relief if we are larger than the $50 million threshold? Yeah, good one. One of our key clients sits in that category as well with a portfolio of 80 stores. John, so we're very much in that category as well. Uh, the code doesn't apply. Um, uh, interestingly, I was speaking to a, a very well-respected person in the industry this morning and he thought that presented even better opportunities because you're not limited by the code. Um, look, it, it, it in some ways it makes it more difficult. The landlord's not obligated to meet you um, like for like with, uh, with um, matching your losses with rent relief. Um, but uh, it comes down to pure negotiation between parties um, calling on in good faith negotiations and uh, all the same principles that apply to the code, really. But um, the tricky part is they're not obliged, uh, obligated to um, to follow that code and to to provide rental assistance. But it, um, but the same principles are followed. Um, Maybe more difficult in many circumstances if if you're that. If you sit outside of the code, then obviously quite a large um, business, uh, and often their response is that you should have enough cash flow to get through this. Um, it, it's a little more challenging, but uh, we're certainly getting some results uh, so far with with uh, our larger portfolio clients, and uh, um, hopefully you can achieve that as well, John. And, and you can always request to. Uh, by mutual agreement to follow the, the, the code, even though technically you sit outside of that. That might be a good starting point. Thanks, Kyle. We've also got Lulu who asks, for retail stores and shopping centres, the rent is only a portion of the monthly amount payable. Does rent in terms of the government rent relief include all other items such as marketing levies, or can these landlords apply the rent relief to the rent portion of the payable only? Um, there's components in the in there that talk about other payments. Um, um, it, it's not completely clear. There is uh, a component in there that says that any any um, benefit that the landlord receives should be passed on in equal measure to the tenant, and that's referring to things like outgoings. So. The, they're currently working with the government on things like land tax and um, um, yeah, their mortgage interest and stuff like that through the banks. Um, the code does say that any benefit they receive should be passed on in equal measure to the tenant. That's the mechanism for um, the tenant to receive uh, relief on outgoings and charges like that. Um, during during closure, there's, there's also a component in there, and forgive me, um, I can't remember the exact wording, but there is a component in there where we would certainly be seeking on behalf of our clients that uh, other costs like marketing levies in shopping centres are waived during the period. Um, and it does allow the landlords not to provide those services during that period um, if they're not charging you for it. So they may stop marketing altogether during the period and obviously they're not charging for it. They may uh, cut cleaning contracts or something like that if all the shops are closed. So it, it is kind of covered, but the, the, the principles I've spoken, spoken about and the rent relief relates purely to base rent. Okay, we have, does this apply to monthly body corporate fees or just rent from Katrina? 
Um, yeah, I think it, I just covered that off. Um, purely base rent fees. But again, I just go back to um, every, everything is up for negotiation. So the, the code may well, well be considered a minimum. Um, some landlords may well enter into negotiations around other costs that you have and, and provide relief for that. Um, the code is sort of the minimum the minimum to provide some relief for tenants around base rent. Okay, we've got Peter asking, our store has voluntarily closed due to lack of trade, whilst the, uh, whilst the centre remains open. Are there implications? Uh, th there should be none. I've certainly heard some horror stories about landlords trying to force uh, tenants to reopen. Um, it's quite clear that uh, there can't be any action taken against tenants. Um, there is mention of that in the code, in the document. <clears throat> um, look, on pure precedent, there's over 120 national brand retailers that have voluntarily closed. Um, whether it's on health and safety grounds, duty of care and so on, or whether it's uh, purely financial reasons, that's the case, and if, if a landlord wants to try to take action against anyone for being in breach of their, their lease, um, I, I think they would have extreme difficulty getting uh, anywhere with that. All right, so our next question, we've got sales are going down every week. For example, April's decline will be more than March's. So do we need to meet with the landlord every month to agree on an amount? Yeah, actually, can you bring up the other slide, Beck, while we're talking through this, the, um, the action plan slide? The action step kind of covers that a little bit. Um, uh, when you provide, agree, um, <clears throat> when you agree rental assistance or rent relief, then this is a very fluid and dynamic situation, obviously. Um, there's still potentially stage four lockdown type measures to come into place. Um, so the, the financial position that you can present this month may be very different um, and, and far better than the financial position next month. So any agreement really should be made on a month to month basis and then uh, formalized at the end perhaps for the amount that is deferred and waived. Um, most definitely we are presenting on behalf of our clients um, letters to landlords that clearly state that this is the first measure or this is the, the uh, updated measures that we, we need to discuss with you. Um, so definitely keep lines of negotiation open. It's, it's, it's likely to change um, and your request for relief should state something like um, should situation deteriorate significantly or, or improve uh, or change dramatically, uh, we, we reserve the right to uh, continue negotiations. Hope that helps. Thanks, Kyle. We've got John asking, my understanding is that the directive about 50% of the rent reduction being a waiver is a minimum percentage. Can you confirm? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, um, Hopefully I've conveyed that. If not, just to clarify, yes, John, um, the 50% is a minimum. So it has to be at least 50% as a waived amount. Um, and on the flip side, the deferred amount can be no more than 50%. So as a minimum, 50% of the rent relief received has to be a waived amount, an amount that you will not repay. You, and I'm, I'm sure I did say earlier, you can negotiate um, the full rental relief amount as a waived amount if the landlord is willing to agree to that. And hopefully they will, because in, in our opinion, you see on the chart there, deferred rent essentially equals deferred failure. Well, many of the small businesses that this is designed to protect pretty much operating month to month, don't have a lot of cash flow behind them. We expect um, uh, occupancy cost ratio as a percent of your turnover to even be higher 
uh, upon opening and for the next 12 to 18 months after COVID-19. So there will be very, very little wiggle room for paying your full rent under your lease, plus repaying some deferred rent um, when that happens. So the less you can defer, the better. You need as high a percentage as possible waived. Um, uh, hope that answers your question, John. We've also got a question from Rania. Her March sales went down by 20% and she's expecting to hit more than 30% in April. Will she be eligible for rent help from the landlord for March? Well, part of the criteria is that it, uh, the impact has to be 30%. Um, so even, even though your raw sales are showing a 20% decline, the wording of the code actually implies something a little different. It implies the total impact on your business and, and it addresses some other points. So um, we're certainly looking at that uh, in relation to some of our clients who are on the border and uh, exploring other impacts on that um, to, to show an overall impact of more than 30% decline in the business. It doesn't necessarily have to relate to top line sales. It may re relate to net profit. It may relate to something a bit further down the P&L. Um, so I would encourage tenants to be a little more creative than just looking at sales last month versus sales this month. It says accurate financial data. It doesn't say it has to be based purely on sales or turnover. Thanks, Carl. And just going back to the previous question about the 50% of the rent reduction, uh, we have an attendee asking, is the 50% rent relief of on total rent for any decline in sales or 50% rent relief on, say, 50% decline in sales? Oh, sorry. Just, can you just rephrase that? Um, so the question asker says, the rent relief on the total rent for any decline is excuse me, is that a 50% of rent relief on total rent for any decline in sales, or is the 50% in rent relief on, say, if you have a 50% decline in sales? So total compared to 50%. Um, the 50% the refers to the rent relief provided. So um, if you're paying $100,000 and they provide $50,000 in rent relief, at least $25,000 of that has to be provided in waived fees. Uh, you, you will not be required to repay $25,000 of that. Um, is, is that. Is that clear? Um, if we need more clarification, I encourage the question asker yeah, to, yeah, yeah, to please let us know. Um, yeah. Jody asks, we have been granted an abatement for April and we have written notice of the reduction. We haven't been issued with an updated invoice reflecting the reduction. Can this be pursued later? Uh, I think a lot of things will be pursued later. Um, as I said, there's, there's a lot of I's to be dotted and T's to be crossed around all of this. So um, uh, uh, if you've received the abatement or advice that the abatement will be provided, then I would be paying the amount agreed and, uh, and be seeking um, clarification of that formally so that you can be sure that it's an abatement and it won't be uh, listed on a future rent invoice or statement as an arrears amount and that, that will be the key item. Okay, um, we have also got a question, if the landlord is unwilling to provide rental relief, what would you recommend as an alternative rental structure we can propose to the landlord to make it a shared responsibility? Um, at LPC Cressa, we, we're very strong on the moment at uh, turnover rent as being the fairest uh, uh, and the safest um, rental mechanism, uh, particularly coming out of COVID-19 where there's, the outlook is really quite poor. Um, a lot of uncertainty around what uh, retail and, and trade will be like coming out of it and for the 12 to 18 months after. So we're certainly approaching that already with uh, any new leases where we're pushing towards uh, rent based on turnover only. 
and um, and getting temporary uh, agreements in place for the 12 months or two years following post COVID-19 um, reverted to a turnover rent rather than the um, current lease uh, base rent obligations. All right, so Kyle, we have gone about 10 minutes over time. Do we have just a couple more minutes uh, of your time to answer a few more questions? I've got time as long as my five and nine year old don't come barging in, um, a la BBC <laughs> news recorder guy. Um, that so, would be fun. Yeah, uh, I, I can take a couple more questions because this is kind of important stuff for people. Absolutely. Um, so Kelly has asked, is there a time frame for the states to legislate the mandatory code? Uh, I don't know that there's an exact time code, um, uh, time frame set. I know it's urgent because it only applies to COVID-19. So everything they're doing is urgent. Um, I was working with Dominique Lamb, the, the CEO of the NRA this morning, and I know she had meetings at midday. So. Um, I would expect to see these uh, this code of conduct go out to states for their uh, state parliaments and legislative uh, bodies to uh, action by tonight, tomorrow, um, certainly over the course of the, this week, Easter and next week. So it, it will become legislation in each state and territory very quickly, um, probably a lot quicker than that normally happens. We saw in New South Wales that that was done, uh, there was work being done that on a Thursday and a Friday and it was legislated on Tuesday. So um, the fact that there's a, a, a code of conduct in place, it, it could be legislated in uh, some states before Easter or certainly right after. Okay. But the code, the code of conduct on its own is, is enough to, uh, to progress on um, um, on that context. Thank you. Um, we've got Mel asking, when calculating your financial data to prove a drop in sales, can you choose to compare to last month or last year, depending on which case gives you the better outcome? Yeah, again, this is a part of negotiation, isn't it? You've got to present um, the figures that you feel are most comparative. Um, you know, as if you were a brand new business last year and you've built a business over a year, that, that needs to be taken into consideration. So it's not just presenting raw figures, but uh, how, how we as tenant reps um, communicate those figures to, to the landlords. Um, and that's obviously one of the key elements of being a good tenant rep um, and at LPC Cresta, the way we represent our tenants to the landlords. We, uh, we look at that raw data, we present it to the landlords in a way that is compelling uh, and, and we look for any leverage we have in, uh, in the data or information that we're presenting to, to get the best outcome for the tenant. Right, so a couple of question askers, uh, askers have inquired, what's the normal percentage of turnover for rent? Yeah, that varies depending on category by retail. Um, if you'd like to go to the uh, ATO, ATO website, they actually have a list of tables there for every category of retail, basically, cafes and restaurants versus fashion retail and jewellery shops and so on. Um, their figures are very low, so they might recommend um, uh, occupancy cost ratio in a cafe at uh, 4 to 7%. There's very, very few cafes actually operating at 7% turnover rent. Um, in fact, as a guide, the portfolio of food and beverage retailers across Sydney and Westfield shopping centres in 2019 were operating at 20.9% occupancy cost ratios. That's extremely high and I, I would consider above 18% uh, would have a business in financial distress. So. Um, if, if we're entering into a new lease, we would certainly want uh, the retailer to be entering into a lease based on forecast sales uh, to, for the rent to, or the occupancy cost to make up no more than 10 to 12% maximum, um, preferably 6 to 8% for a very good business. 
Okay, great. And we'll go our final question. Um, we have an attendee asking, are we pushing for turnover rent to be mainstream lease agreement going forward? Um, I think in, in many cases, it, it would be very good. Um, it hasn't been afforded to very many retail tenants in the past. Some of the big international players uh, um, do leases on turnover only, but they're turning over 56, 60, 80 million dollars. So uh, they, they, they have the opportunity to negotiate that. Um, it hasn't uh, traditionally been uh, accepted by landlords. Uh, they would prefer to have a known rental component and then perhaps some uh, turnover rent on top of that uh, to share in the upside. Um, more and more recently, landlords have been pushing for higher percentages, uh, which means turnover rent kicks in sooner. Um, Westfield's going to minimum 12% turnover rent, so uh, they haven't done that previously. And that was their expectation, certainly in the last six months. But I think all that will change after COVID-19 when uh, this will cause a massive correction in the industry. Uh, market rents will be um, heavily impacted on, we believe, and uh, that will afford more tenants the opportunity to uh, negotiate different ways. Uh, turnover rent, definitely. It may not be accepted by uh, a lot of landlords, but it should be in the conversation. Wonderful. Um, so Kyle, why don't you take us through what we can expect from next week's webinar? Yeah, I, I've got a slide there. Um, <laughs> if nothing else changes, if there's no major announcements, if there's uh, stage four lockdown isn't, um, isn't brought in, then I think we'll just expand on this week um, uh, and look at preparing for post COVID-19. It's gonna be crucial. If you get relief uh, from your rent over the next three months or so, you've still got to get through the 12 to 18 months after that. And I've touched on LPC Cress's view on where the market will be um, and, the, and the conditions and the opportunities to renegotiate leases. For example, in the code, it says uh, you may be able to extend your lease on the same terms and conditions so that you can amortize the deferred amount over, over that full period. We would highly recommend not to extend your lease on the same terms and conditions because we believe rents will be 10, 15, 20% lower and you can renegotiate uh, a lease renewal on a much better terms uh, in the next lease cycle. So we'll address some of that stuff. Um, what will trading conditions be like? Uh, how to negotiate for the recovery period after COVID-19? And um, um, more of what we talked about today and hopefully lots of questions because that's the most benefit to you guys. Wonderful. Kyle, thank you again so very much for taking your uh, some time out this afternoon to help our retailers. If Kyle has not answered your question and you'd like some further information, please email marketing at nra.net.au. Uh, we're more than happy to um, have a listen to what's going on and try and answer your queries. Um, LPC Cressa also does provide discounted rates for NRA members, so please you know, feel free to take advantage of these services. We've also got the link for next week's webinar in our chat. So if you'd like to please go and register for that one, um, make sure that you'll get the notification. Thanks, Beck. Thanks everyone for joining. Thank you everyone. Have a good week.